Musical Talk, the UK's independent musical theatre podcast, celebrates 10 years of broadcasting. Hello and welcome to another edition of Musical Talk. I'm Thos Ribbits and if you're imagining me in a festive mood, bedecked in a red and white fur trimmed robe with a jovial expression on my face, full of good cheer for the human race, you're absolutely right because I've just met Father Christmas and I've killed him, skinned him and I'm wearing his pelt. And what could be more festive than that? And with Christmas in mind, dead or alive, it can only mean that this is our annual Musical Talk end of year quiz. Now, if you've recently been burying your head in the sand, you will somehow have missed Musical Talk banging on about how we've had a million downloads. We have 10,000 listeners a week and we're 10 years old. We're very proud of all three of those things. And to celebrate, we've been mentioning it a lot. Well, we're going to be doing that again today because this year's annual quiz is going to mark the 10 years of Musical Talk's existence by having questions based on each of the years in which we've been broadcasting and one more looking into the future, which will give us a total of 12 questions. And if you don't think the maths adds up, just wait until the end and then count them on your fingers. You do have 12 fingers. I assume most of our listeners did. <laughs> One for every day of the festive season. Anyway, it doesn't really matter about fingers because this is a digital broadcast. That's a very clever joke. Write that down and look at it later. And by now, as this is traditional, you probably know what we're going to do. We're going to ask questions and then we'll play a song one of the songs you will have heard on Musical Talk over the course of the last year. It's a chance to rehear some of the musical highlights of 2016. And then afterwards I'll give you the answer and we'll move on to the next question. And as I say, each question today relates to a particular year. So let's get the Michael Ball rolling with our very first question, which of course is about 2006, which was the year Musical Talk started. So pin back your ears and listen up for the very first question. In 2006, Avenue Q premiered in London at the Noel Coward Theatre. The theatre had just been refurbished and the show opened on the 1st of June of that year with the theatre formally renamed to the Noel Coward Theatre on that same day. But what was the name of the theatre before that? And to give you some thinking time, let's hear a song. It's called Do You Want a Baby Baby from the Busker's Opera by the wonderful and massively talented Dougal Irvin. Oh babe, I don't know where to start really. It breaks me heart when I see what they've done to you. Sitting there tied to a chair in your underwear. Look like your hair, have you had it straightened? Anyways, you be nearly naked makes it easier. Kinda reminds me of the last time I was seeing you. Remember Ronnie Scott's who dance a lot, you said look hot. You said something about the economy too, but I forgot. It's a good night, right? A fun night, right? I could have danced all night, but the inevitable happened well. In the morning, you disappeared without warning. No goodbye, so I had to cry and I went shopping, bought this real nice Jimmy Chuan bag though. It's amazing. Two weeks later, I read a song on the radio. A new release, Funky B, and it made me go, Oh, is there something more to life? I got a sense of some kind of destiny. I got a feeling some things are kind of meant to be. Oh, what I'm trying to say is, yeah. Do you want a baby, baby? Cause we're having a baby, baby. Do you want this baby, baby? Do you want a baby, baby? Yep, we're having a baby, baby. Do you want this baby, baby? I just can't help it, I'm a naughty baby, baby. Right, I understand that we're a one night deal. Please don't feel like I'm trying to trap you or nothing. I mean, I'm too young to have a kid. I was gonna get rid. I even borrowed off my dad the thousand quid. But here you are under lock and key in front of me. And I can't help but think of Providence. You're an artist. I'm the mayor's daughter. We ought to capitalise on our potential. We'll get our pictures in a low and okay, okay, okay. Then we've got your autobiography. We'll get paid to attend film premieres. How many child could make both our careers? And I haven't even started on the merchandising. 
Google Irvin's Do You Want a Baby Baby from the Buskers Opera. And the question was, what was the Noel Coward Theatre known as before Avenue Q opened there in 2006? Well, the answer is the Albury, which was named after Sir Bronson James Albury in 1973 because he'd been the manager there for many, many years. Up to that point, it had been called the New Theatre, but as it had been built in 1903, I'm not sure anyone thought that name was appropriate anymore, so it became the Albury and now the Noel Coward Theatre. Of course, that venue is still most famous today as being the place where the original premiere of Oliver took place in 1960. Well, they say time goes faster as you get older, and you're already about five minutes older than you were when you started listening to this episode of Musical Talk. And we've moved on a year, because the next question relates to 2007. And here it is. Spamalot opened in London in October 2006, with Tim Curry making his return to the West End stage after 20 years, and he played the role of King Arthur. But, as this is a 2007 question, which respected actor not noted for his singing, but who was involved in singing Everybody Ought to Have a Maid from the Stephen Sondheim 80th birthday concert a bit later in 2010 at the Royal Albert Hall, took over as King Arthur after Tim Curry left the role, after four months, in January 2007. So, to boil that down, which non-singing actor played King Arthur after Tim Curry in 2007? And to give you mulling time... Here's I Belong in Space, from the musical Summer Nights in Space, by Henry Carpenter. This is a fantastic song. When I was a boy Growing up in the biodome I would gaze through the plexiglass window With tears on my face I would stand there and stare at the rocket's red glare As they flare with no care through the acid rain air And I'd think to myself I belong in space I belong in space not here in town. Every week another robot uprising is getting me down, choking down smoke tangled up in magnetic tape. There's too many ads, nothing ever stays clean. And I hate the taste of Soylent Green, oh baby. You know I gotta escape. Cause I belong in space. I mean space. So I went to 
Space Base, where the facts of space are taught. Space Base, they have a silver tennis court. Space Base, where every astronaut to go. I sit here. I am. Sign me up. I wanna be a spaceman. Fly around and do stuff with a wham bam. I'm space's biggest fan. Send me up. No need to ever bring me down. Cause I belong in space. I belong in space. I belong in space. Then Space Base said, Your eyes are bright and your hair is fine, but you can't go to space cause you're only nine. So study hard and in a few more years you can take your pick of the space careers. So I studied hard for the GCE, never went to parties but they weren't for me. I just stayed in my room with a skipping rope. Peak physical condition, I never smoked dope. And when I went back to Space Base, they took one look and said, You're in the Right place. You're a credit to all the human race. Someone get this boy a bayonet. Congratulations, John Spartan. You're our latest space cadet. Cause you belong in space. You belong in space. You belong in space. So I trained. And I trained. And I never once complained. And ten years later, there's a knock on my door. Said they had an opening in the science core. And they'd get me into space as soon as they were able. Well, I was so excited that I jumped on a table. Three, four. Woo! <laughs> yes! I'm finally going into space! Yes! In your face! In your face! And soon enough, I got my mission Didn't once read my commission I was just so proud and happy As I climbed on board the spaceship I climbed on board the spaceship Strapping in all clear for takeoff And then I arrived All was calm And so beautiful as I gazed through the portal once more, there were tears on my face. Then I noticed some words painted up on the vents. They were written in lipstick and signed by my friends. They said, so long, John. You belong in space. There we are. I belong in space. I'm just telling you that. It's also the name of that song by Henry Carpenter. And the answer to the question, which actor took over from Tim Curry? Well, the answer is Simon Russell Beale. Now, leaving 2007 behind, on to the next question, which is about 2008. Which new musical adaptation of a pivotal 20th century film with book, lyrics and score by Margaret Martin closed in London after only two months after getting reviews like this one from The Independent? The show is neither as bad as one feared nor as good as one had a right to expect. And this one from The Guardian. There is something extravagantly pointless about the whole exercise. And then this review from The Sunday Times, which is a bit of a clue... Frankly, I fear, you won't give a damn. And while you're trawling your memories for an answer to that question, let's hear a fantastic song from this year's Edinburgh Festival Fringe. It's the Telltale Heart from the House of Edgar. I am dreadfully nervous, but I am not mad. Hearken and observe how healthily, how calmly, I can tell you the whole story. First had the faintest of foulest of thoughts, unfeasible to say. But once lodged in the back of my restless brain, it would haunt me night and day. The old man never harmed no man, but it was by his hand that I thrived. Yet I took delight in the right to ensure that by night he would no longer survive. He had never wronged me. He had never given me insult. For his gold I had no desire. I think it was his eye. Yes, it was this. He had a pale blue eye with a film over it. Whenever it fell upon me. My blood ran cold. Now this is the point, you fancy me mad. You would not judge if you saw how I planned. Madmen are nothing, they know not a jot. Nervous I may be, but a madman I'm not. Yes, manic I may be, but a madman I'm not. So for seven nights by lantern light, I hid outside his door. 
And the time I spent to shop and sense a sense of fearless nervous of the nearness of the task that I performed. Lantern aloft, I slowly pushed the lonely door aside. With disbelief, I saw him wake from his sleep, his eyelids peeled back wide. Now this is the point, you fancy me mad. You would not judge if you saw how I planned. Mad men know nothing, they know not a jot. Nervous I may be, but a madman I'm not. Yes, manic I may be, but a madman I'm not. Subduing my pride, I knelt down by the side and gazed upon the source of my rage, my pain, of my fear and disdain, of an evil cold and coarse. From his mouth came too late to unseal his fate, a single final cry. And with his last living look, he fixed me with that pale blue vulture's eye. His pulse rang like a drum boot, a thudding bass and marching snare, and it faded into the distance as I entered the vulture's glare. The night waned, and I worked hastily but in silence. First of all, I dismembered the corpse. I cut off the head and the arms and the legs. I then tore up three planks from the flooring and deposited all between the scantlings. I then replaced the board so cleverly, so cunningly, that no human eye, not, not even his, his could have detected anything, anything wrong. wrong. As the bell sounded the hour, I heard a knocking at the door. I went down to open it with a light heart, for what had I to fear? There entered three men. Officers of the police who said they had heard a shriek. I told him the old man was away in the country and bade they search his house well. Now this is the point you fancy me mad. You would not judge if you saw how I... Like a pocket to watch it with the softest sticky caught my ear. And it broke like a double time bass drop beat marching ever near. And like a disease of pain and ease to root deep in my gut. It seeped and spread and oozed and worked like a foul and festering cut. As it rose running red like cord clicked up, loving back at the back of my throat. It mixed with the deafening dead man's cops to produce a pounding note. The chaotic chord crescendo, it was a devil's art. I fell to my knees before the police of a world by his tail to heart. There we are. All the fun of murder there. That's the telltale heart from the House of Edgar. A song that's really made its way into my heart, mind and memory and brings a smile to my face every time I hear it. And the question was, what was the show that closed after only two months in London in 2008 based on a famous film? The answer is Gone with the Wind, which was directed by Trevor Nunn. If you go to Wikipedia, you'll find this rather deathless sentence. After opening to poor reviews and criticism on the length of the show, the producers announced that the show will be cut from its original running time of three and a half hours. And they reduced the running time to three hours and ten minutes, including interval. I'm not sure that chopping 20 minutes would have been enough to save it. And indeed, it wasn't. Well, our question on 2008 has gone with the wind, with gone with the wind. But let's find out what 2009 can offer us. It's another film adaptation question. And listen carefully to the unsubtle clues I've placed in the wording. Which musical, based on a film which might be described as second to none, opened in London with Sheila Hancock and Ian Lavender in the cast? As another clue, it was nominated for Laurence Olivier Awards in four categories. Best New Musical, Best Actress in a Musical, Best Performance in a Supporting Role in a Musical and Best Theatre Choreographer. And to give you a little bit of wriggle room on the old thinking front, here's a short song, so don't waste it, called The Will, from one of the loveliest shows I saw in Edinburgh this year, which was called Like Clockwork. <laughs> If you're reading this, I've shuffled off my mortal coil. I'm dead and buried in the soil. My goose is cooked, my bunny is boiled. If you're reading this, I haven't risen from the dead to tell you what this letter said. What's racing round inside my head? And if you're reading this, I must assume that you're quite smart. So let's forego the heart to heart. Tell you what. Under the chronometer of such immense cranial capacity that it makes Nostradamus look like Quasimodo in direct comparison. Huh? There we are. The will from Like Clockwork. And where there's a will, there's a way to answer the question. 
And the question was, what was the name of the musical based on a film which opened in 2009 with Sheila Hancock and Ian Lavender? And the answer is Sister Act. It's funny, I'd completely forgotten that had come to London, but it ran for over a year, running from the 2nd of June 2009 right up until October 2010. Interestingly, Whoopi Goldberg joined the cast as the Mother Superior in August 2010, but just for 17 days. And if you're wondering which of those Olivier Awards it won, it was nominated in four categories if you remember, the answer is, and this is appropriate, none. So, moving hastily on to question five, which relates to 2010. Well, 2010 saw the 80th birthday of Stephen Sondheim, as we've mentioned, but it also saw the death of Blake Edwards, who's probably most famous for creating the Pink Panther films. However, in 1962, Blake Edwards wrote a film set in London called The Notorious Landlady, which featured Fred Astaire. Fred was a singer as well as a dancer, and he sang the theme tune, which I think is extremely catchy, to The Notorious Landlady. But the score of that film made strong use of which other song introduced by Fred Astaire 25 years beforehand? And I'll give you a clue. It's a George Gershwin number. So have a bit of a ponder and see what you think that might be. And whilst you're waiting, let's hear a song from Wags the Musical. And this song is called A Place in This World.
there we are, a place in this world. And funnily enough, that's appropriate for the answer to the question, because it relates to a place in this world, in this case, London. The question was, what song, originally introduced by Fred Astaire 25 years before he appeared in the 1962 film The Notorious Landlady, was used as the basis of the incidental score for that film? And the answer is, A Foggy Day in London Town, written by George and Ira Gershwin for the 1937 film A Damsel in Distress, which, like The Notorious Landlady, was based in London. Time for question six. And this is about 2011. Now, not many musicals are about real people, but one such musical, which originally premiered in 1972, opened again at the Menier Theatre in November 2011, and it featured Francis Raphael and soap opera star Ian Kelsey. In real life, the central eponymous character died of the plague, but he doesn't do so in the show. So, what is the name of the piece? And whilst you're waiting for an answer, let's hear a song called Waiting from Like Clockwork. we are waiting from like clockwork and the question was what was the name of the show which opened in November 2011 at the Menier Theatre in which the central character does not die of the plague when you see it on the stage but did in real life and the answer is Pippin by Stephen Schwartz 
In real life, Pippin was known as Pippin the Hunchback, another thing we don't get in the play. And he was actually sentenced to death by his father, who was Emperor Charlemagne. But this was eventually commuted to exile in a monastery, where he went on to die of plague in 811 AD. I think you'll find most of those facts do not turn up in Pippin. Well, our next question is related to 2012, which for Britain was a very big year. It was the year we hosted the Olympic Games. And I think we would have to agree that the Olympic Games opening was the biggest show of the year. But which of the following facts about musical theatre in 2012 is not true? Russell Grant played The Wizard in Andrew Lloyd Webber's The Wizard of Oz. Legally Blonde closed on 7th of April, January 2012 at the Savoy Theatre. The Gaiety Theatre was threatened with closure by a New York bank. Two different musical adaptations of The Great Gatsby played in London at two different venues. And Cole Porter's Aladdin played in London in the middle of summer. All you've got to do is think about those five statements and work out which one you think is absolute codswallop. And to give you time to digest that, Here's Stop It, I Like It from the wonderful Stop the Train. Baby girl, it's a big, big world and there's many fish in the sea. I'm not trying to roam, but I'm flesh and bone, so you'd better keep your eye on me. I'm not trying to flirt, I'm not trying to hurt, don't even want to be free. But when I see them walk and I hear them talk, well, that's the end of me. They got bumps and curves, there's four hors d'oeuvres, and I haven't even mentioned lips. They've got wild eyes that make you lie, and legs right up to their hips. They're from outer space, they're the fairer race, and we all know who's in control. But with a lick of the lips and the swing of the hips, well, a man can lose his soul. Stop, 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 stop it, I like it. Why don't you stop, 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 it feels good. It's so wrong, I'm getting excited. Mm, please don't stop, though I know you should. Eve. Now Eve won't leave till Adam tastes her wares When a woman wants you better say yes Or you better start saying your prayers In every place there's a pretty face attempting variety But I'm not looking, not available, please Don't tempt me Stop, 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 stop it, I like it Why don't you stop, 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 it feels good so wrong, I'm getting excited. Mm, please don't stop, though I know you should. Five, two, eyes blue, skin as smooth as cream. Not to have her a nightmare, but to have her a dream. Eloquent and radiant with two first class degrees. And the kind of hips which fingertips were invented just to tease. So I looked away She gave me the eye And so I sighed a sigh I'm weak And I'm being led astray Astray Stop, 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 stop it I like it Why don't you stop, 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 stop It feels good It's so wrong I'm getting excited don't stop, though I know you should. Dark and dirty, round about dirty with 42 on top. She knows her wine and all things fine and likes to dance till you drop. I said, I like to sing. She said, I like to swing, but I didn't see her moving her feet. Then she stroked my thigh and looked me right in the eye and said something that I can't repeat. There we are. Stop it, I like it from Stop the Train. And we'll be doing an episode of Musical Talk about that in the new year. But the question was, which of those five statements which I read out before the song wasn't actually true? 
And the answer is the Gaiety Theatre was not threatened with closure by a New York bank. That's actually the plot of the fake Gershwin musical Crazy For You, which you could have seen in London at the Novello Theatre in 2012. There is actually no Gaiety Theatre left in London. It closed years ago. But interestingly, all the other facts were true. So there were two versions of The Great Gatsby playing at the King's Head Theatre in Islington in August and then at the Wilton's Music Hall in April. And they were totally different adaptations. And if you wanted to see Cole Porter's Aladdin, you could have done so because it was featured as one of the Ian Marshall Fisher's Lost Musicals series at the Lillian Bayliss Theatre at Sadler's Wells. Well, after that little conundrum, we're going to step manfully into question eight, which is about 2013. So it's another list question. Which of the following shows did not open in London in 2013? Very simple. And here's the list. The Book of Mormon, Stephen Ward, From Here to Eternity, The Scottsboro Boys, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, The Commitments, The Light Princess, American Psycho, The Bodyguard, Once, Candide, Titanic, and The Colour Purple. Which one did not open in 2013 in London? And one of the shows I mentioned was Titanic, which, as we know, was very badly damaged. Which allows me now to make a cheap and horrible link into this song called Damaged from the wonderful Stop the Train. Scattered debris all around There's a hole And it's me that made it Stop the engine, hit the brake I guess I was on the take There's a hole And it's me that made it And the last thing that I thought was I'd be lost without you And the last thing I let slip was my disguise You've moved up and you've moved on And the damage that I've done You say permanently breaks these ties I've done Once we were two Now I'm one Once we were two Now I'm one You went and left me I all alone I went and left you all alone And now I stand alone. here I'm on sorry. my own You're gone Look at the damage we've done Look at you Faking injury 
Well, the question was which of those shows which I listed before the song did not open in London in 2013? And the answer is The Bodyguard, because it premiered in London on the 5th of December 2012, with previews from the 6th of November of that year, which is 26 days out to be a 2013 show. And in other 2013 musical theatre news, Thriller Live welcomed its one millionth customer, Billy Elliot the Musical saw its four millionth audience member and Wicked had its five millionth customer. Now, unfortunately, the information I have doesn't tell me if that's one person who's seen it five million times, which, as we know about Wicked, is very possible, or there were just five million ticket sales. Probably the latter. Well, wither 2013, so let's move on to 2014. Do you know, they do work in chronological order years, so do keep up. It's not that difficult, really, is it? So... Here is the question about 2014. Much loved but short-lived musical I Can't Sing, the X Factor musical, as it was fully called, by Harry Hill and Steve Brown, opened on the 26th of March 2014. But sadly, it closed again after just over six weeks. Now, during the course of its very short run, it actually rebranded itself and changed its name slightly, so it dropped the reference to the X Factor in its advertising and just became I Can't Sing, the musical. But what was the show originally going to be called? And whilst you rack your brains to try and think of the answer to that, let's hear a song from Wags the Musical. It's called Cooking the Books. We're in an age of targets, goals and high objectives. To keep ahead, one's forced to mount a sneak attack I'm three grand overdue, but move the Y Carrying the ten, brings fortune into view Just add a naught, and once again I'm three grand in the black Excellent Cooking the books, Frank a decimal here makes a profit appear Who's the wiser? Make them all look, Frank At the entrepreneur causing a stir on the scene They all mistook, Frank But how I shock at shifting the stock With earnings that border obscene For crying out loud, I'm hardly proud But one must stand out in the crowd By fudging the facts, Frank a positive spin ensures that you win admiration Be calm and relaxed, Frank Ahead of the fools who play by the rules every day Divide and subtract, Frank Fake a receipt and then take a seat At your show which blows them away Just don't let the guilt destroy what you built Keeping your conscience at bay And loading the dice, Frank Promoting a sale on stock that is stale is my ideal Hiking the price, Frank And charging a fee on free merchandise is a steal Miss Thestaniki, a pleasure Yes, the TV crew will be here And all is on track In person <laughs> I and the store are honoured Hello? And suddenly I sense a change in fate's direction There's no pretense the gods are smiling over me Deceit can bring reward But nothing untoward Merely deserving for serving the powers that be For years faithfully Oh! Cooking the books, Frank Gets you a portion, sets you on course for Sardinia a star on the rise, a champagne on ice for a year You're not a crook, Frank Merely a soul achieving its goal A trailblazing rogue pioneer Lies, 
get you ahead The truth gets you dead Loving the life that I've led I'm hooked Cooking the books Well, the question was, what was the original name of I Can't Sing, the X Factor musical? And the answer is, it was originally going to be called X Factor. It's time to face the musical. Interestingly, that's not the only thing that changed its name in the preparation period leading up to the opening of the show, because the puppet dog also changed his name. He was eventually called Barlow when we saw him on the stage, but originally he was going to be called Top Shop, and then after that he was going to be called Primark, I'm not making this up. And then he was going to be called Pound Shop, which of course, as you'll realise, will free you up from any copyright concerns. And then he was going to be called Psycho, which of course is the name of Simon Cowell's company. It's a great pity. Not nearly enough people went to see the X Factor musical. It's such a shame. But I Can't Sing lives on very, very strongly and with great affection in the hearts of everyone who did see it. Not least me. Right. Now on to question 10, which relates to 2015. Very, very recent, really. So, let's see if we can get this. Margaret Thatcher died in 2013, but was still being portrayed on stage, with the non-musical play, The Audience, being revived in London in May 2015. And funnily enough, she was also appearing in a non-musical play at the same time, called Handbagged, which was on national tour at the time, having already been in London. And, of course, she's referenced in a song in Billy Elliot the Musical. But which of her prime ministerial predecessors was also appearing on stage in the West End in a musical in 2015? And whilst you work that one out, let's hear a song from the fantastic Quentin Dentin show, which was at the Edinburgh Festival Fringe in 2015 before coming to London in 2016 and maybe coming back again. Keep your eyes peeled for that. This song's called Numbers, another one of my absolute favourites by Henry Carpenter. Numbers, numbers, numbers tell me everything I ever need to know. Numbers can be high and they are the best numbers. Up. Are the numbers down? Cause numbers make the world go round. Are the numbers up? Are the numbers down? Cause numbers make the world go round. What's your favourite number? Is it five? Is it five? What's your favourite thing about being alive? Is it poetry or piety or aiding your society? If you don't like ambiguity, can't tell ugliness from beauty. Take my hand, learn where you stand. Cause numbers make the world go round. Come on, everybody, and buckle your pants. Time to do the number dance. One, two, three, four numbers! How much have I still to prove? Woo! Numbers! And they dictate my every move. Music is only numbers making sound. Numbers, 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 numbers
Henry Carpenter's Numbers from the Quentin Dentin Show. And the question was, which prime ministerial predecessor to Margaret Thatcher was appearing in a musical in the West End? By appearing, I mean someone else was portraying that person. Well, the answer is Harold Wilson, because he was a character in Made in Dagenham, which had become a musical and which had opened in 2014 and closed in April 2015. Mark Hadfield was the man who was playing Harold Wilson, and he'd also been the baker in the 2010 production of Into the Woods at the Regent's Park Open Air Theatre. And once again, it's strange how these things happen, because I mentioned that Margaret Thatcher was appearing in two totally different non-musical plays. Well, interestingly, Harold Wilson was not only appearing in Made in Dagenham, but he was also appearing in The Audience at the same time. Once again, not a musical, but you could see Harold Wilson in two different shows in London in 2015. And both Wilson and Thatcher are significant characters, even if they don't appear, in James Graham's rather wonderful This House, not a musical, but a play well worth catching in London at the moment. It's a revival of the Royal National Theatre's production of a year or so ago. Well, question 11 therefore looms, and it's about this year, 2016. And here is the question. 2015 saw one famous Barnum, Jim Dale, appear in the West End in his one-man show. But which other famous Barnum came to London this year in 2016 as the star of The Go-Between by David Wood, and Richard Taylor. I think this is an easy question, but I'm going to give you thinking time regardless. It's time for another song from the Busker's Opera. It's The Tale of the Rat. This is the tale of the rat that kept on growing. There once was a rat and it ate so much it got fat. It was a fat rat bigger than a cat. It was so obese that its legs ceased to carry its weight. And so it lay its bait awaiting its fate. It was found on the ground by a groom and his pretty young bride. The bride cried, take the rat inside and keep it as a pet. And so they kept it and it ate more than any rat had ever ate before. The rat sat on a wooden stand and the couple fed the rat by hand. Turns out what the fat rat loved to eat was the rubbish people throw away in the street. This is the tale of the rat that kept on growing and the people had no way of knowing how to stop the rate of growth from slowing. Do you not see where we're going? The rat grew so big it filled the whole room Its growth went boom with all the rubbish you consume The couple ran out of rubbish, they had no more So they collected from the neighbours via door to door Word reached the mayor, who had an idea This thing makes litter literally disappear This rat has potential to be the solution To our very real problem of waste pollution The whole town rushed around in haste To bring the rat their non-essential waste The more they found to throw away the more that the rat grew every day The tale of the rat that kept on growing And the people had no way of knowing How to stop the rate of growth from slowing Do you not see where we're going? The rat was so big it was the size of the town With fur so healthy and wealthy and brown As everybody signed to the mayor's proposal Let the fat rat deal with the waste disposal So half the population worked night and day To create useless things that could be thrown away The other half were busy keeping the rat fed And the mayor lived in peace up on the rat's head The land was cleaner than it ever been There was no rubbish anywhere to be seen With only one problem, just only one the massive giant rats blocking out the sun The tail of the rat that kept on growing And the people had no way of knowing How to stop the rate of growth from slowing Do you not see where we're going? The rat was so enormous now, to put it bluntly It was too big to measure About the size of a country And all the world's leaders sat in hot debate Our rat's too big, it's become its own state Is it time to stop this? Is it time to quit? Can people really learn to deal with their own shit? The trouble is, the rat provides motivation Creating and dumping drives every nation If we don't have a rat, you see We might descend to anarchy We can't go back to how we were Let's Let's live on the rat, we'll live in its fur. The tail of the rat that kept on growing And the people had no way of knowing How to stop the rate of growth from slowing Do you not see where we're going?
That tiny little rat was now the size of the earth, with four billion tiny people clinging to its girth. A lucky few on the top, where the air is fresh. Around a billion in the middle, on the hairs of its flesh. But the poorest half live underneath its bits, doing repairs to the platform on which the rat sits. And as the rat shits, they open their mouths in prayer, saying, Thank you, rat, for these gifts you share. They don't know they're eating waste It's the only thing they'll ever taste And only those on top are allowed to know That fat old rat died years ago The tail of the rat just keeps on going And we all have no way of knowing How to stop the rate of growth from slowing Do you not see where we're going? Do you not see where we're going? Do you not see where we're going? The Tale of the Rat by Dougal Irvin from his wonderful show The Busker's Opera. And the question was, which Barnum appeared in The Go-Between earlier this year? And the answer is Michael Crawford, who incidentally also appeared as The Wizard of Oz in Andrew Lloyd Webber's The Wizard of Oz, Do Keep Up, a few years ago. If you remember earlier on that I had already mentioned that Russell Grant had played that role, well, so had Michael Crawford. And on to the last and twelfth question, which is about 2017. Now, as 2017 hasn't happened yet, this question could therefore be a bit tricky. But I hope not too bad. So, 2016 saw the British premiere of Rogers and Hammerstein's Allegro, the show that famously features Stephen Sondheim in his first theatrical employment in a small technical role. But in 2017, we're going to see the British premiere And it is a premiere of which Sondheim musical? And I'll give you another clue. It's a kind of animal. And whilst you're waiting, let's hear a song about a very different animal. In this case, a raven. Or rather, THE raven. From the Edgar Allan Poe musical, The House of Edgar. Distinctly I remember A dark and cold December When each separate dying ember Wrought its ghost upon the floor With haste I wished the morrow Vainly I had sought to borrow From my books relief of sorrow Sorrow for the lost Lenore For the rare and radiant maiden Who the angels named Lenore It was then I heard a gentle rapping At my chamber door Deep into the darkness peering long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming Dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before But the silence was unbroken And the stillness gave no token And the only word there spoken Was the whispered word Lenore In there stepped a stately raven Summoned by the name Lenore And it perched upon my chamber door And whispered nevermore At my lintel did speak only that one word As if her soul in that one word she did outpour Nothing further than she uttered Not a feather than she flirted Till I scarcely more than martyred Other friends have flown before On the morrow you will leave me As 
my hopes have flown before You will leave me as she left me Then I felt the air grow denser Like the aura of a spectre And I heard the spirit's footfalls Tinkle on the tufted floor Wretch thy God have lent thee By these angels he hath sent thee Give me respite, give me mercy From my memories of Lenore Spare me this mercy So I forget my lost Lenore Oh, spare me this mercy Leave no black bloom as a token For that lie thy soul hath spoken Leave my loneliness unbroken Quoth the raven Nevermore And the raven never flitting Still is sitting Still is sitting And the lamplight o'er oh, her streaming Throws her shadow on the floor And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor And my soul from out that shadow Shall be lifted nevermore Well, there we are. We've just finished with The Raven and now it's time to answer our very last question which is, what Sondheim show is being premiered in Britain in 2017? And the answer is the Frogs, finally making it over to Britain. It's going to be on at the German Street Theatre, which is a tiny venue near Piccadilly Circus, but puts on some really rather wonderful stuff. Now, you probably know this, but The Frogs is an adaptation of a play originally written in 405 BC by Aristophanes, which is a mere 2,421 years ago. And oddly, that number, 2421, is also shared by a famous spy satellite launched by Russia called Cosmos 2421. And that was originally launched in 2006, the year that musical talk started. So, as you can see, we've gone full circle like a clock. And if you're thinking, why on earth is he putting such heavy emphasis on the word clock? It's because we're going to finish today's show in just a minute with a song from Like Clockwork, which is called Clock and Roll. But before then, I just want to say, on behalf of everyone involved in musical talk, I do wish you a fantastic Christmas, a wonderful 2017, and I do hope that you'll join musical talk next year as we continue to celebrate our 10th anniversary with an amazing array of different shows on different subjects. You never know what you're going to get in musical talk, except of course now, because you're going to get me saying goodbye, and I've already told you what the next song is. But... Let's just recap. So, the song is called Clock and Roll from Like Clockwork. And I said I was going to say goodbye, and this is how I'm going to do it. Goodbye. Let me introduce myself, I need no introduction. You are the puppets that obey my every instruction. I'm not
your mate, but you don't hate me. Want to excommunicate me? I dominate the centuries and the decades and the years and the days and the hours and the minutes and the seconds and the milliseconds, microseconds, nanoseconds, picoseconds. Clock and roll, it's true. This episode of Musical Talk edited and presented by Thos Ribbits. Copyright Musical Talk 2016, except for each of the songs where the copyright remains with the respective creators. And my huge thanks goes out to each and every one of them for allowing us to play all of those songs here on Musical Talk. To find out more about the world of Musical Talk and listen to past episodes, go along to our brand new website, musicaltalkpodcast.weebly.com or subscribe to us on iTunes and follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can at Musical Talk Thos. Happy New Year!